Viking finger weaving with Barbara Klesig. Um, again, if you could keep yourself muted, unless you are asking a question, just so we don't get any feedback sound, it'd be greatly appreciated. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you. Hey, th thanks a lot, Nick. I um, really appreciate you doing this. Um, yeah, um, I'm Barb Klesig. Um, I'm a textile archaeologist here in California, um, specializing in pre-medieval textiles, but I'm also a reenactor. Um, I do historical reenactment with the Society for Creative Anachronism. Um, if you're at all interested in that, there's so many places you can go to to look at that, you know, as far as your local group and that is concerned. And so what we're going to be doing is some very basic um, slanka braid, as, as the Scandinavians would call it, or Viking finger weaving. Now, it's not specifically Viking finger weaving. It's actually a, a, a type of... Um, technique that is found all over the world, but it just so happens that we happen to find it in archeological evidence um, in a number of Viking graves that have been excavated over the decades. So that's why I've come to call it that and that's kind of how I learned it. Um, so what I wanted to do is, is, is I'm gonna start off with a three thread um, technique. That's the basic to get started. It gets you, gives you an idea of how to manipulate the, the threads themselves. From there, we'll move up to a five thread, okay? And if we have time, we can move on to a seven thread. Now, if you look at my um, phone here, um, Nick, if you wouldn't mind highlighting my phone, there we go. Um, I have a sample here. This is a seven thread, all right? Um, this is, uh, we, I've got three different techniques on here. If you can see them, this, the top one here is basically a square technique, okay? It looks almost like a square. We have then a flat braid technique, all right? And then we have basically what they call that fishtail technique. Um, both sides of it looking pretty cool. Um, I actually kind of like this side a little better. Is that too much light on that for everybody? Or, or can you see that okay? Looks good to I'm trying me. To, it looks okay. You can see it. Okay, great. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so, so yeah. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have a couple things you need to get started. You know, obviously you need some yarn. Okay. Um, I'm going, I'm working with um, this uh, Catania. Um, it's a, um, a um, cotton, fairly thick thread, as you can see. Um, and um, I like it because it's easy for, um, particularly when I'm working with kids at the museums and that, teaching them how to do this, it's very easy for them to hang on to. And you can get it in just really some all kinds of, of different colors um, that uh, I, I ordered a pack from Amazon with about 20 different colors. I think it ran me like 30 bucks. Um, so I recommend it if you want to do some, you know, some work with the, uh, doing a little bit more of the the finger weaving itself. Now, what you want to do is, is, is to start off with the three, what you want to do is, is you want to select three of your colors. Um, you need um, basically about a 20 inch piece. We're just going to do a sample piece um, here for today. But um, what I have here is I have this gold, maroon and pale green, all right? And um, cut yourself about 20 inches, all right? Um, you, uh, uh, we're, we're just doing a sample, all right? And then what you also need is, is you need something to tie off onto. That can be the leg of your desk. Um, it can even be an upside down um, uh, C clamp. Um, if you've got warping pegs, you can use one of the work warping pegs. I've got a warping peg on my desk here because I'll actually sit and weave sometimes when I'm lecturing to my class um, because uh, it's rather relaxing. So um, once you've got that done, what you want to do is um, what I like to do is, is I take each of my colors, all right, and I fold them in half. And I do it individually because that helps to keep those loops separate from each other. And once you've got those folded in half, 
what you want to make sure of is, is, is that your loops down at the bottom are pretty close to the same length. So you can see that my, all mine are kind of um, at the same length. It doesn't matter if they're a little off. It's, that's not going to make much of a difference as you're, but you don't want them too much off. You know, a, an inch or so is going to be problematic because it's going to make you, it's make, going to make it a little harder for you to manipulate um, a, a, as you're uh, doing your finger weaving, okay? Making sure that each of these colors are separate from each other. So um, you don't want to get them tangled up, all right? Now, once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to take at the very top here, okay, and just do a little overhand knot. So you're going to take, if I can do it here, you're going to take and make a loop, bring it around, and bring the ends of your um, yarn to, through, and then just tie it off like that so that you've got a nice little knot around the edge. I mean, at the edge of the of the um, yarn, okay? Again, making sure that these aren't getting tangled up too much, all right? Now, if you have it, um, what did I do? Oh, there it is, okay. Um, if you have it, um, I like to use twine, um, uh, that you can get at the hardware store um, to tie off on just because it's inexpensive, it's thick, and it, it, you cannot, it does not break, okay? It's, it's really hard to break twine. And so what you want to do is, is you want to cut a little piece off for yourself. I'm, mine's a little longer than I, I need because my peg's on the back side of my desk, so I have to bring it forward. But again, what you want to do is um, cut yourself a piece, um, fold it over in half. All right. Now, if if you're close, to, if you've got your setup close enough to you, where like it's right at the edge of the desk here, you know, just do a short, you know, maybe four or five inches. Um, I I'm I'm doing mine from here because of, of where my camera is set up, but. Um, Again, do a little over net hand knot here at the end. Okay, and make it a loop itself. All right, just like that. Oh, my camera's slow, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Okay, all right. Now, am I, am I going too fast? Are we doing okay? Uh, seems to be lots of concentrating faces. Okay, all right. Oh, there's lots of I'll, thumbs up. You're good. <laughs> oh, I've got uh, everybody's doing okay. All right, so we got some thumbs thumbs up. Okay, all right. Um, so what you want to do at this point is taking the end of your loop. Is you're going to take and open up each of these loops. So I've opened up the loops. Now I'm going to put the end of the loop through the loops, bring it back over the top, and take the knot from my twine here, put it back through its own loop. Okay, just like that. Oops. Lost my knots there. Bring it down until it's right against the knot of your finger weaving colors, okay? And there's multiple ways that you can do this. Some people just like to tie it off um, in, a, in a knot to begin with. You, you know, it, it's, it, this is just the way I got taught and it just seemed like the easy, easiest at the time. So what that's done is, is that's attached this to my my weaving threads so that what I can do is basically put it over my um, warping peg behind the camera here. Okay, and now I'm ready to basically um, do some finger weaving. Okay. Give everybody a couple minutes to get that set up. 
And as we're waiting, as we as everybody's getting that set up, go ahead and separate each of your loops, okay? Now, as you can see, I'm using three different colors for this. You do not, you know, have to, but I find that having the separate colors like this, particularly for those people that are just beginning to learn how to do um, finger weaving, it gives them kind of a, a visual as to how the threads are working through each other. Um, and you'll find that when you start looking at finger weaving um, on online, um, some people will do all but one thread in, in the same color so that they have a, a stripe working its way through the, the, the finger weaving itself, the piece itself. Other people will do incredible design works. Um, there's, uh, there, are, there is a group in Facebook called uh, Finger Loop, oh, what is it? Finger Loop Weaving Manipulation, I think it's called, something like that. Uh, um, known World Loop Manipulation? There's, yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, um, I know. There's Finger Loop Braiding and Known World Loop Manipulation. They're two separate. Okay. Um, I, it's not the Known World. It's the, it's, it's the Finger Loop Braiding um, one. And there's, there are people on there that are working with um, 14 and 16 and 20 threads at a time. Now that's usually two people working the thread, the threads um, at a time, but um, it, it's, it's kind of, I've watched a couple of the videos and I'm going, okay, I'm not quite at that point yet. Um, I do do some um, Cherokee finger weaving, which is similar to what we're doing today, but it's individual threads. They, they don't have the loop at the bottom. Um, and they do these incredibly wonderfully wide bands um, that we can see in um, Cherokee uh, finger, uh, finger weaving. So, all right. So if everybody's ready, then what we're going to do is um, there's a couple different ways you can hold your threads and this is entirely up to you. I prefer the down method, okay, with my fingers down. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get in the camp. There we go. Okay. Um, I Don't ask me why. I, I'm not at all sure. It's just uh, my preference. All right. So what you're going to do is, is on one hand, um, and it doesn't matter which, you're going to put one of the loops on your middle finger. Okay. Then on the other hand, you're going to take the other two loops and you're going to put one on your index finger and one on, let's see, trying my camera's kind of backwards here. <laughs> um, you're going to put one on the index finger. So I've got the gold on the index finger. Uh, oh, great. Oh, thanks. Um, uh, thanks, Nick. And um, then I've got the light green on my middle finger. Okay. Can you, can, is that, is that a good focus on that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now you've got, you've left your index finger free here. All right. And that's going to start your, the weaving procedure. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that index finger and you're going to go over that one thread of the gold, okay? Then go under the thread, other thread of the gold, grab the green, okay? And bring it all the way, let, then letting it go, bring it all the way through and tighten down, okay? Now, what you have to do is you see your gold still on your index finger, right? So what you're gonna to have to do now is you have to walk it over to your middle finger by bringing your, let me get in the camera here, bringing your middle finger down through it and then letting go with your index finger. And now your index finger is free to do some weaving. All right, so tighten that down a little bit, okay? Now, taking your index finger, go over the green, the first green, under the second green, grab the maroon, let go with your middle finger here and pull it through. Okay, now again, we have to walk it over to our middle finger, bring middle finger in, let go with your index finger and now you're ready to go. Okay, uh, let's see, do we have any no questions yet? Okay, all right, so, what that's basically the, the, the basics of doing a three count. So what you can do is go over one, the first maroon, under the second maroon, grab the gold and bring it through. All right, 
So if you want to do that, just do that for a few minutes, okay? Over the gold one, under gold two, grab the green, let go with my middle finger and bring it through. And don't forget to walk so you have your index finger free. Sorry, I keep getting it out of the camera, don't I? <laughs> okay, over, under, grab, let go, and pull it through. Okay, remember to walk, over, under, grab, and pull it through. Remember to walk. Oops, going the wrong way there, sorry. <laughs> over, under, grab, pull it through. And then what you'll find is you can actually develop a little bit of a rhythm as you work down your finger weaving. Now, you'll also notice that it looks very similar to basic braiding, okay? Um, when you get the three pieces going, you know, whatever you're braiding, whether it be your hair or, or you know, some chunky, chunky ribbon or something like that, okay? Now, if you want to change it up a little bit, what you can do is, so we've been going over the first one, under the second one. So this time, go under the first one, over the second one, and bring it through. And it won't change the design itself, but what it will do is change the color sequencing. So, and it's a little, actually a little harder to do for me, but. <laughs> and bring it through. Now, I do know that some people will actually braid like this, okay? And this is actually a little confusing for me for some reason. And I've seen other people braid from the top like this. Um, but for, for some reason, I prefer my, with my finger down, fingers down. I'm not sure why. So, um, yeah. Okay, so how, everybody doing okay on that? Yeah? There seems to be nodding of heads. I think they're all tied up with their fingers. <laughs> okay, all right. So <laughs> there seems to be nodding heads. <laughs> okay, like yeah, this nodding or this nodding, Nick. <laughs> no, no, that, that, good. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so take take that out to the uh, you know as far as you want to go. All right. And like I said, once you've developed, you kind of develop a rhythm that goes with it. You can get to the point where it moves pretty quick. If you get it tight enough, you can actually play it. You know, it actually makes a twangy noise when you got it. Good question. <laughs> oh, there's a question. Yes. Um, if you like, I will drop something off the table and I put my threads down. Now I don't know which threads were on which hand? Um, you know, honestly, is that Pamela talking? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Pamela, well, I, I, I do it too. Yeah. yeah. And, and there is a trick what you can do uh, right now, just pick it up and start again because we're, this is just practice. All right. But um, when we, when we do okay. a little bit longer sample, I'll show you there's a trick that I do when I want to stop, when I want to take a break. All right. So just pick it up and just start wherever, wh whatever works for you for right now, okay? Um, th because that's, honestly, that's okay. the easiest, yeah, that's the easiest way to go for the, for the time being. So does that make sense? So yeah, yeah. so just, okay. just put Thank them back you. on your fingers and start. You'll, it'll, you'll have a little bit of a, a, of a variation where you, where you, you know, you had to restart again, but right now it's a sample, so you know, save it for later. So, okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. A1 has a, I, you usually have a comb hand, put the right in the on it. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I see what you mean by combing hand. Yeah. So, um, 
into a comb. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. That's cool too. I like that. I don't know if you see that, um, Pamela, but um, Kat says that she uses a, a comb, you know, she'll have an, a, a comb that with the tie, the, the, um, uh, um, Thanks. tines coming up that you can actually lay it over the top. So, um, yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So now when you get down to the end, okay, what you want to do is You will get to a point where you won't have much room left. Okay. You know, I try to get it down as far as I can, but I've got chubby fingers and, and so I end up with quite a bit of leftovers. So, which I think is about where I'm going to go. So at this point, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take and I'm going to bring it together and just do that little overhand knot at the end. And Pull it tight, okay. And you can see here where um, I, I started off with my over under, but then I changed to the under over, gave me a little bit different um, sequencing on the colors itself. And um, I actually found, I guess I actually tightened up a little bit there too. So I was weaving pretty fast. So um, I don't always get it nice and tight when I'm weaving fast. But uh, you can see down here towards the end, I got a little bit tighter. And that's, that's basically just as you pull, begin to pull things and, and move things, you, um, you, you pull it as tight as you can and you can get a tighter sequence on that. So, okay. I'm gonna take a drink of water. <sighs> Any questions on that? So far, uh, I'm kind of confused. I started out late. My name is Rosie. Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But I'll catch up. So. Okay. Do you, is there anything I can um, I can help you with as far as explanation? I uh, just uh, I just got myself all set up with the stream. So. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. No worries. And we can go back over the, now. It, I mean, you are welcome to, um, I don't know. Do you, what time do we, let's see. Okay. We, that took about 20 minutes. Um, yeah. You don't have to do, you know, do a long piece for your samples, you know, when you're first learning how to do this. I have seen pieces um, at our reenactment events. There was one year, um, this woman was actually working on 20 yards of, of finger looping. And so she had it all out across the courtyard and she had somebody up where, when, as she braided, it, she'd had somebody up at the top here that would beat it into place. So they were, you know, braiding and, and the, the beater would walk down and beat and walk down and beat and she'd sit at the end and braid it and walk down, you know, and it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I appreciate that, but I'm not sure I'm ready to do 20 yards or something. Some people holding up their examples, so. Uh, Are they? Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. On all, all, oh, they're all doing it at once now. I can't spot like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's okay. Can you see them all? Do you want me to spotlight them? Hang on. I'll oh, yeah. Let's do some spotlight. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. There's, okay. There's everyone. Right. Hang on. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Everybody bear with me. I'll try and do it on order that I've got. Ah, woohoo! Okay, and there's Sin. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, oh, I like the colors in that too. So, oh, look at that one. That's oh yeah, Tina. That's awesome. If you think okay, well, it looks like everybody got that down. Oh, that's nice, Jennifer. I like that one. Hey, Je oh, Jennifer, hi. <laughs> Long time no see. All of a sudden, I realized who that was. <laughs> and is it pronounced Gita? Yes. Gita. Okay, great. Awesome. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, those are lovely colors. Okay. I love, I do like doing the brights. I like doing something that shows off a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Okay. There's Pamela. And okay. So which one's who? Okay. We've got 
Pamela, Pamela, is Pamela in glasses? Oh, fantastic. Got two on that. Oh, one. excellent. Okay. Oh, hang on. I've got okay. On this one. Let's see. I don't know if I can't, I can't make that one big. Could yeah, no, she's, hey, yeah, it says ne her network bandwidth is low. So, okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and Secret Scroll has one of an image of one, but I can't make that big. So, because it's only an image. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, good. Fantastic. Okay, so so it looks like everybody got that down pretty good. So what we're going to do is is, is um, you can take and you can reuse the string that you have here just by pulling it pulling it out um, by pulling your your basically pulling the loop end out, pulling your strings out, and just pull it right out of your your piece. Okay, so you can you, you reuse that piece again. All right. Now, um, I'm going let, I do we move, do people feel comfortable moving on to five strand? Yeah, should we go ahead? Okay, all right. So then let's move on to five strand. All right, keep your samples. Yeah, we got thumbs up. Now, what you're going to do, now this is entirely up to you. Um, you can do five different colors. I do five different colors because that way you can see how I'm working the manipulation, okay? Um, but it's entirely up to you if you want to do two and three or if you want to do one and four, that's, that's up to you. Um, so I'm going to take five colors here. Um, I'm going to do a short sample, but if you want, you can do um, a longer sample by doing one yard, okay? And depending on the, how long your arms are, I do, I do the, the, the traditional method of measurement from from thumb to nose, okay, which is actually for me is 39 inches. So you actually get a meter when I measure it. Um, and then um, basically um, cut five of those of whatever colors you want to do. I go, oh, ha, I put my scissors away. What a thought. Now let's see. I really like this maroon and gold and the green worked really good. I like that. But if you want to do it just a shorter sample size, by all means, just do, you know, do about 18, 20 inches. Because obviously the longer it is, the longer it's going to take to weave. So. Oh, what other color do I want to add in here? Oh, okay, maybe green. While everyone's cutting threads, Barb, I have a question oh, for you. Sure. This is Kat, and uh, you're describing this as a Viking finger weaving or uh -huh. um, type braid. Um, is there anything different from the finger loop braids found in Viking era Scandinavia and other later European Middle East or um, Middle Ages? finger loop braids no it's same all the thing. same technique it's Excellent. just it it's it i think it got it, it it got i think because we find so little in the way of textiles um prior to the middle ages okay now um what you have to remember is is, is the middle ages for most of europe um, is a not the same as it would be for Viking Age Scandinavia. Um, I mean, the Middle Ages starts a, basically at about the fall of the Roman Empire and goes up to 14, 1500 current, current era. Um, whereas as in Scandinavia, um, after the fall of the Roman Empire, you have what they call the migration period, the Vendel period, and then the Viking Age, all right, um, and then up through the um, the the Middle Ages um, for the with the rest of Europe. So um, what we're looking at is um, late Middle Ages. Um, so we're looking at somewhere between um, 12th, 13th century up to um, actually up until 
current era because there's still places in in parts of Europe that still do this as a technique for trims and for cordage and that type of thing. Um, so um, it, it's basically the same technology, but because we found it um, in a number of graves um, from the Viking era, um, it's, it's become, I learned it from somebody in Sweden and, and they call it slunk, a braid, and we know it goes back to the Viking age because of the artifactual evidence that we have. So, um, so yeah. Thank you. Um, so we have early different. evidence, early evidence, Middle Ages, Western Europe, and through the Renaissance up to current age, all Absolutely. finger loop braiding of some type. Yeah, it is. It is. Excellent. And and depending on, um, you know, depending on how many loops they were using as to the different types of, of designs that they could be done, um, uh, that's, uh, you know, and, and you see much more intricate designs happening in the Middle Ages as people began to understand more and more how to ma manipulate the loops themselves. We see incredible pieces, finely woven pieces um, in um, Viking Age Scandinavia that are single colors, you know, and, and it was just, it was made as a, as a, you know, something similar to this piece here where it's got the, you know, the flat braid technique going to it. Um, and I don't remember ever seeing anybody, oh, sorry about that. Nick. Um, I don't remember hearing of anybody that did, has done um, major research on um, finger loop braiding for Scandinavia or cilantro braid. You know, they haven't sat there and, and counted each of the threads. Oh, excuse me. Um, each of the threads that um, like we do on, on other articles of, of textiles. So I, I couldn't tell you how many loops they were probably using in each of those pieces that we have found. Um, who knows, maybe there's a, you know, some more research for me somewhere along the line um, that, that could be be of of consequence so who knows but yeah so it, it was that too much way too much about cilantro braid no, i think somebody else wasn't too enough. Enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's perfectly yeah. fine but now we're all just we're working if whether we've got our five loops or not <laughs> <laughs> um, okay I've got, I've got a question on the history if you don't mind not at um, all no who's, um, where where am i looking this is right. sin. So, oh, sin. And, okay. Um, do you know what um, what digs or or in the general vicinity of where they were finding finger loop braids? Yeah, yeah. We're we're looking at mostly um, places um, of of what we call um, nodal points, places like Berka and and Had to Be and um, Khao Pong. Um, these are major um, Viking Age um, uh, settlement areas right. that were situated along the coastline and were um, part of that trade network. Um, so we, are you finding finger loop braiding in all of those places? I, you know, honestly, I, I don't know right off the top of my head. I haven't done enough. I, I you know, I read it when I'm reading for, for my particular research for my PhD, you know, I'll kind of, oh, I'll make note of, oh, oh, they found some finger loop braid there. And I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head without going back through some of my, some of the reading I have to do. There are some incredible pieces of research out there as far as some of the textiles are concerned. But um, so and, where and, do and I start looking? Say again. Where do I start looking for this information? Start looking with um, well, there's a some great of the the, the, the archaeological journals from um, there's the Danish or um, the Journal of Danish Archaeology. There's um, let's see the uh, State Journal of Sweden Archaeology. There's a Gotlandic um, Journal of Archaeology. Start looking in those journals, um, you know, uh, and and you know, if you even just googling something like um, oldest evidence of finger loop braiding type stuff. So have, um, another, another question as well. And it says, sure. is, there, is there reason to believe finger loop braiding had specific maritime uses? I know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think most of what has been found in the past 
um, because we don't find a lot as far as um, maritime uh, um, textiles are concerned. You know, we, yeah, sure, we'll find bits of rope, you know, we'll find um, bits and pieces of sails, um, but we don't, there's, I think there's only ever been one, maybe two good sized pieces of sails from Viking Age ships that have actually been found. Um, most of what we find are just bits and pieces. You know, we feel lucky we can when we can find, you know, partial garments. Um, so like the Kastrup um, gown that we that has been found for uh, the the overdress for Viking women, but we don't find a lot as far as the the maritime textiles are concerned. We know they had to make them. We have pic pictorial evidence um, of, you know, on on picture stones and and. Um, accounts of other uh, people that traveled with the Vikings themselves, as far as knowing about their their maritime activities. But you know, it's it's you know most most of the ships that we would have found were sunk, and <laughs> there was um, there's a, a place in Denmark, the uh, the Roskilde Viking Longship Museum, that has some incredible incredible work that has been done um, with some ships that were um, removed from the water itself, from the, the, the waters around Roskilde. Um, and maritime knots are, oh yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, are conserved over time. Yeah, they can, they can be conserved over time for sure. But um, what, we, what we do find is, is, is just little bits and pieces, but um, uh, they've got a new 3D um, image set up for the uh, Viking Longship Museum. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, you get a chance to take a look at it. It's, it's incredible. Um, Oseberg, in, the Oseberg in um, Oslo now has a 3D imaging that you can see, walk around the Oseberg itself, walk through the artifactual display. Um, and, and look at, um, I don't think they have the textile room online yet, but they're supposed to be taking doing that at some point in time. So like I said, way too much about, <laughs> about, um, about the archeology. span So do I have five, one, two, am I missing one? One, two, three, no, I got it. Okay, all right, let me get mine tied up real quick here, okay? So. <laughs> Yeah, um, Kat and Ao and know that you know you can get me started on te archaeological textiles, and I won't shut up. So um, I pr I probably should have done a slide presentation, huh? Because I do have new stuff, Kat. That's for next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I usually when we 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 have. Um, uh, what used to be the Griffin Dye Works retreat, and we, um, I would come down and and inevitably I'd just be getting back from being over in Sweden or England, and I had all the, you know, I'd have all these great pictures of of tools and textiles, and we'd sit around and drink, we'd sit around and drink wine in the evening, and we'd look at, at really cool pictures. So. <laughs> okay. So make sure all your loops are, are nice and, and away from each other. Tie the knot at the top. I don't know if everybody's gotten to that point or not. If, if I just talk too much. Yeah, I think you gave them last time to get themselves all prepared. <laughs> yeah, you're basically doing the same thing with the five as you did with the with the three. You know, as far as getting them organized and tied off at the top and then adding in your your um, tie off to the leg of whatever you're, you know, you're using or, or, uh, or a um, warping peg or a C clamp. I'm using my foot. Oh, the, yeah, no, I know people that do that too, so. <laughs> I have my safety pin to the arm of my armchair. <laughs> that works. Yeah, I'm just just some place that'll give you the tension you need to, to get through the braiding sequence. That's, that's all you need. 
I'm so. thinking my ring light might have a whole new use to it. Your what? <laughs> my ring light that I have for. Uh, <laughs> Are you tied off on the ring light? No, I no, I I decided that uh, trying to finger loop and try and press all the buttons at the same time wasn't a good idea. Probably not. <laughs> no. I shall. Right, how many? Nice... Go ahead. No, oh no, I was just going to say, but that's the nice thing about recording it. Yes, exactly. I can watch it later and give it a go. Yeah. So. How many variations oh. are we going to do on the five? Oh, probably three. Okay, excellent. Okay. Yeah, I I try to keep it you know, simple and I, I don't want to say simple, but easy to get through in a couple hours. So um, I, I really love, um, we do, we do different events. Um, October is archeology span month and we do different events at museums and that. And I, I love sitting with the kids and um, doing a finger loop braiding. And, and I, I set up kits and everything for them ahead of time. So that, but they only do three because otherwise, you know, they lose their, it's, it, it, they can, it's easy to lose their attention. And so um, I have them do three and, uh, and, and I don't do any variations on that with them, but um, I found just doing the three was probably the easiest, easiest thing to get through. So, and, and if, oh, let's see, I don't know, we might have time for, um, now you can see I made my, I have, I have maybe made mine a little too long. Actually, let me tie that up a little more. I think you might still be just out of shot. Say again? I think you're going to be just out of shot still. Your fingers. Are they out of, oh, uh, yeah, they are. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Let, me, let me do. I'm guessing they're kind of the important thing. It is, it is to a certain extent, yeah. Especially once we get into some of the variations. Can I even get that tied up? Okay. That, okay, that, and well, and actually I could just move the camera out a little bit too. There we go. There we go, okay. So what you're gonna do is, um, as you're getting yourself set up, what you wanna do is you want to get You get to talking too much and then everything gets tangled up. This is what I mean about getting tangled here. <laughs> well, boogers. Oh, there we go. Okay. So like on the three, what you want to do is, is, is you want to have um, two on one side and three on the other. So what I've done is, is, is I'm putting one on my ring finger one on my middle finger, leaving my index finger free. And then over on the other side, I have the three set up. So, okay. So I've got my index finger three, free. All right. So uh, hang on just a second. I've got a twist in my maroon. Okay, there we go. Oh, crap. Whoops. Is that over? Yeah. All right. So, um, are we ready? Do we have a, okay. So again, you've got your index finger free. Now the first variation we're going to do is similar to what we were doing, um, with the three. All right. And what we're, but the difference being is, is, is we're going to be grabbing a couple of threads at once. So you can see how this, this pale green and the regular green are kind of together here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under, okay? I'm going to go over the pale green two and regular green one, okay? Then under, grab my gold 
and bring it through. Okay, did that make sense? Okay, now you got to walk. Now you got to get moved from your middle finger to your ring finger and from your middle finger to your, in, from your index finger to your middle. So now you're, you're in, whoops, sorry. Let me get back in camera there. Your index finger is free. So you've got to walk it a couple more times. Uh, on, Hold on then, one then you, Barbara, sorry. We have a question. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, she, we couldn't quite see the walking, I don't think, because you would. Okay. Try. We we're just off of camera. Okay. All right. All right. So, so what, what's, uh, where am I here? Sorry. I got lost for a moment. Okay. So you, you've done, you brought your gold over. All right. And you've tightened up. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ring finger here, place it where you're in the, the green, where my middle finger is, take my middle finger out. Okay. Place it where my index finger is. Sorry. I'm trying to get where my index finger is and then let go of the index finger. So now your index finger is free. Okay. Did that, did that, was that clear? Uh, it was clear to me. Okay. Are we got, okay. So is that, is that good for everybody? I think so. Okay. Okay. So remember to tighten it down as you go. Okay. So the tighter you pull that at the top, unfortunately that's out of camera for, I'm, uh, but, um, the tighter you pull that, the tighter the weave itself is going to be, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my index finger and crud, did I go under? I went under, didn't I? <laughs> I forgot where, I... okay, under, under um, gold one, over gold two and blue one, under blue two and Grab the maroon and bring it through, okay? Then what you're gonna do is bring finger through blue loop, move your, remove your middle finger, middle finger through gold loop, remove your index finger, and now you've got the free index finger to continue weaving, okay? So is that good for everybody? I think you might just need to talk through it a couple more times. Okay. All right. So we're going to take and we're going to go under one, over two, under one, and grab the loop on the outside and bring it through. Okay. Tighten it up. Walk your threads. And now you've got your index finger free, okay? So under one, over two, under one, grab your outside th loop, bring it through and tighten it down. That was nice and clear. Okay. So walk your threads over to your ring finger and middle finger. So your index finger is free. Under one, over two, under one, grab your outside loop and bring it through and tighten. Okay. So let's, let's do that for, um, I don't know, let's do that for about an inch or two, um, depending on how long you made your sample. I got a little long here, um, but let's do, yeah. Um, if you've got just a short sample, let's do about an inch. If you've got a longer sample, do about a, a couple inches. So under one, over two, under one, grab your outside loop bring it through and tighten it down. Okay. Walk your threads under one, over two, under one, bring outside loop through, tighten it down and walk your loops. All right. Are we doing okay on that then? That's so I'm going to- A couple of confused looking faces. Oh, okay.
So under one, over two, under one, grab your outside loop and bring it through and then tighten it down. Walk your loops under one, over two, under one, grab the outside loop, bring it through and tighten it down. Just trying to see my own work there. <laughs> okay, walk it over, under one, over two, under one, bring outside loop through and tighten it down, then walk your loops. Under one, over two, under one, bring it through and tighten it down. Walk. Under one, over two, under one, bring the outside loop through, tighten it down and walk. I know people don't want to let go of their loops. So if anybody's in real trouble and needs that repeating, if you want to sort of shake your nod your head at me or indicate, because I know you've got your fingers full. So the um, I, I mentioned to Pamela, I have a little trick as far as um, if you don't have anything to like, you know, a comb or something to um, to do your uh, hold hold this in place for you. What mine is 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 what I will do is 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 I will leave my now I've got the three on one side and the two on the other. So I'll actually lay those down like that. If I need to take a break, okay, I'll bring them together. All right, and then I will just take and tie. You have to shut. A, 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 oh. Boogers. Okay. I don't know if I can do, uh, let's see if I can get that. Uh, that. Okay. Oh, I know what I'll do here. Hang on a second. That's right. I put a slip knot in here anyway. So, okay. So you can see I've got, I, I, I had the three on the, on my left-hand side, the two on my right-hand side. So what I did is I kept those separate. All right. So what I, I'll, what I do is, is basically I take and make um, a bow by, bring, by bringing a loop, bringing it around, and then tying it off in place. And what will happen is, is, is as you let it go, you'll see that what I've done is, is, is the ends of that bow itself, I've got the three that were on the left-hand side, on my left-hand side. I've got the two that were on my right-hand side. I can leave them like this. And when I come back, all I have to do is undo that bow and I can see I've got the light green, the maroon and blue on this side, and I've got the gold and green on that side. Okay. So that Pamela, that was my little trick for not having any other apparatus to do that. So did that make sense? Do I, should I show it to you again or? Let's see. Because I actually have to take a drink of water right now. I don't see anybody shaking their head at me. So I think okay. Cool. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for monitoring that for me. I appreciate that, Nick. So, okay. okay. So now if you, you know, if you get to the point where, I don't know, what if I got a couple inches there? Yeah, yeah maybe do a little. Do, uh, um, someone says that makes a lovely flat braid. It does. This is the, this is one of the flat braids. And what we'll do, what we're going to do next is going to, it's going to be, give you that square braid. Um, so, um, separate these out, get them set up. What you want to make sure though, is, is, is that you don't have any twists in your threads as you're setting yourself back up again. Okay. This, before you set it back up, you might have to shorten your string again. Yeah. You're not going to be able to shorten see your fingers. Yeah. So I just realized it was longer than it needed to be. So, sorry. No, that's okay. No worries. Just keep them separate. <laughs> okay, there we go.
Remember to leave your index finger free because that's you're going to be that's going to be your weaving finger on the side that has two threads. Okay, so oops, I got a twist in the green. There we go. Okay, so we're set back up again. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit more um, on on this because um, I want to get a, a, a just a little bit more um sorry i can't talk Am I getting, yeah, I'm getting it tighter, okay. All right, oh, you could almost, okay, it's coming into the picture now. Okay, so um, are, are people okay with moving on to the next version of it? Okay, so this is actually the next version on, is gonna be a little simpler, okay, in the respect that we're not doing as many over-under, over-unders, okay. So what you're going to do for this sex, sec, the second version of this, okay, is you're going to go over, under, okay, and you're going to go over, under everything. You're going to go over one, under all three of those strands, grab the outside one and bring it through. Walk. So you're going to go over one. Under three. Oops, sorry. Let me get back in. Okay, so I've got over one, under three, grab my outside loop and bring it through and then tighten it down. Walk it over one, under three, grab the outside loop and bring it through and tighten it down. Do your walk over one, under three, grab the loop, bring it through, tighten it down, and do your walk. Over one, under three, grab the loop, bring it through and tighten it down and walk. Okay. Um, are we doing, is that, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. Oh, there's a Halima there. That's cool. Had a good friend that was only Halima. Over one, under three, grab the outside and bring it through. Over one, under three, outside, bring it through, tighten it down. And as you're working down, you'll begin to see that you've de developing a little bit of a square looking braid in, in, with this particular technique. Were you making a flat braid with the first one? Yeah, it comes out of, it should come out a little flat braid. There'll be a little, a little, um, almost like a bump on, on one of the sides, but it, it should look fairly flat, so. I was doing something wrong. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. Who, who was that? So was I, this is Rosie. Oh, okay, all right. Shiny. Um, I don't have my camera on. Okay, oh, okay, all right.
So I don't know if you can begin to see it, but you've got a bit of a, of a squarish braid going here, okay? Um, with some chevrons coming through it to a certain extent. So, and I'm not tightening down as much as I would like, but I think that's because I'm trying to rush it, but. Well, the good thing is because this is going on YouTube, we can all go and have another practice. That's, yeah, yeah, that's true, so. <laughs> Is that on Kingdom YouTube or regular YouTube? It'll be on regular YouTube. The February has its own channel and with all the classes will be posted on that. If you keep an eye on your Thank events you. on the Facebook, we'll post on there when it's been put up. Okay, um, when you've had enough of that, let me know. Oh, and dozen. then we'll move on to the, the third version. Yeah, there's a there's nodding and thumbs up. Okay, everybody's nodding thumbs up. Okay, or 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 I've got we're getting nods in that. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, so the third version we're going to do is similar to the one we did before, but um, instead of going over, you know, going under, uh, over, under, you know, the uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start by going over green one under green two, over yellow one, under yellow two, and then bring the blue from the outside and through. So that what you're doing in this technique is, is you're separating all of those threads, okay, by go, instead of going um, under a couple at once, you're only going over or under one individual thread, okay? So it's over one, under one, over one, under one, and then bring your outside loop through and tighten down. Okay. Yeah, you might just have to, if you if you move your strings over just a little bit to your, that's it. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'll move my seat there. That works a little better too. Okay. So over one, under one, over one, under one and bring the outside loop through. So walk over one, under one, over one, under one, and bring your outside loop through, tighten down. When you bring that outside loop through, is there a flip? Uh, I, 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 okay, let me see what you mean by that, okay. Over one, under one, over one, under one, and bring it through. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by a Are flip. you grabbing the closest edge or the furthest edge of that loop? The closest edge of the outside Excellent. one. Thank you. Okay, that, thank you. Thanks, Kat. Appreciate that. Okay, walk it. Over one, under one, over one, under one. Grab the close, thanks. Thanks for noticing that, appreciate that. The closest one, the closest one to your your other threads, okay, and bring it through. I'm not sure it would make much of a difference if you did grab the outer one, but I'm not. I, I haven't played with that before. So, over one, under one, over one, under one. Grab your loop and bring it through. Over, under, over, under and bring it through. Over, under, over, under, and bring it through. Under, over, under, bring it through. Over, under, over, under, bring it through. Okay, anybody else? Um, everybody doing okay? Deep concentrating going on. <laughs> and I've got an itch. <laughs> oh, <a> thumbs up. <laughs> Over. <laughs> over, under, over, under, and bring it through. Over, under, over, under, bring it 
through. Now, as you're bringing, as you're, as you're weaving this um, in place, you'll begin to notice that you've got a nice little square going on in this version too. It's even a little more square than the earlier version. Um, and you're getting a really nice um, chevron pattern going in each of these. So, okay. Now you can do other variations um, on this itself too. This is M. Uh, hopefully I won't confuse you, but um, I've had you start with an over, right? Well, you could actually go with an under, over, under, over, and then bring your loop through. So that will give you a little bit different variation on it. But for right now, it's probably <laughs> enough to, to, to get this variation down, so. I know the the Lena, the lady who taught me this um, back in Gotland, um, she tried to get me to do a niner once and it was like, yeah, no, that's not working because at that, that point you have to you have to use your thumbs and and I can't manipulate enough my thumbs well enough to be able to do that. And I stuck with sevens, so. What we got? Oh. So um, at this point, um, it's in, you know if you uh, if you did a short sample, you know go ahead and finish it up. If you didn't do a short sample, um, like me, um, you can you can stop there. And if you want to try and move, we've got what about forty five minutes, so we could move on to a seven um, loop if you would like. So um, that's it. I will leave it up to you if you would like to join us by all means, but um, I will, you know, if, if you're happy with this, I do understand because it can be a little overwhelming. Ooh, did I get one? Oh, I did. Um, did we want to share people's work maybe? That would be lovely. I would love to see everybody's work. Hang on. Oh, all right. Bear with me, people. My no. Right. Let me see. Ah, there's one I can show. Oh, let's do that. Oh, who's? Oh, let's see. We got. Oh, look at. Oh, Kristen. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Oh, hey, Grant. Oh, hi, sweetie. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay. Everybody, this is one of my apprentices uh, um, in the SCA. Um, Chris, Chris in the mundane life, Deirdre in the SCA. Um, she's one of my naughty apprentices, um, K-N-O-T-T-Y, by the way, and uh, gosh, yeah, love to see you, dear. First time with palms down, fascinating. Oh, okay, interesting, Helena, okay. Um, oh, oh, Sin, that looks really nice. I like that. That's really cool. Okay, I like the colors on that, too. So thank you. Maybe what I'll do is is, is um I might um oh I lo I love uh, the the all the have we met before? Um possibly. I'm also in Kaib. I'm the Baroness of Starkoffin. Okay, just because you look familiar and the name's familiar, and I don't know if maybe we'd met in an event I think down I'm there. I only meet it in Kaib, so it, it's okay. possible. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, excellent. Okay, those are cool. All right. Oh, lovely. I like those colors, Tina. Those are nice. Yeah, it's uh, almost like you got a little Christmassy going there, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rosie, how are you doing? Well, here we go. I'm going to make you bigger, Rosie. Hang on. There we go. I'm doing good. Oh, yay. Okay. Oh, I like those colors. Those are nice, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, and another one. Oh, oh. oh, we got, oh, and there's AON. Oh, oh, yeah. And of course, 
Yeah, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've been practicing. Why are you here? Why are you here, Ellen? <laughs> because I'm sure that already I've learned something new, and okay. I'm I'm not doing it to learn the the basics. I'm doing it to learn tricks that other people do, like <laughs> not just putting all the ends together, but to make them just the loops together has been yes. wonderful. Um, and I keep cards. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that, that, that have the ends. So cool. Okay. Secret Squirrel's got pictures of hers up because they're pictures. I can't make them big, but hers look great too. Oh, okay. All right. So now I'm curious, I, I mean, I know, I know a number of people that are here, but I'm curious as to if you got a moment and wouldn't mind putting in the chat where you're located. I mean, just a general idea, like, you know, um, you know, uh, Deirdre's from upper New Jersey. So, um, and, and, uh, you know, I know Eowyn's from uh, Southern California and that just, just because it, I, it's interesting to, I get interested in, okay. Um, where people are from, you know, and, and uh, particularly, if, you know, how much they're interested in, in, uh, in, in string theory, as I call it. Oh, you're in Richmond. Okay. Sin's in Richmond. My sister's in uh, Virginia beach. So, um, and okay. Yeah. Gita's from, yeah. No, thanks for doing that. I appreciate that. I, I just really enjoy. Oh, Halima's in uh, in Canada. Okay. All right. So you're up in BC, Halima? So Barony of that that I am. I'm okay. I um I'm on Vancouver Island. Okay. Uh, basically middle of Vancouver Island because we have the Barony of Seagirt south of us. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. Let's see, we've got uh, Utah. Okay, it's been a while since I've been in Utah. Okay, FMI, okay, Harrisburg, Williamsburg. Oh, I love Williamsburg. We we have our experimental archaeology conferences out at Williamsburg. So um, let's see, who was that? Who was that? Uh, that was Tina, wasn't it? Okay. But. Yeah, I just I love I I love the fact that I was watching you know people um, joining the the February group and um, and uh, um, just seeing just I mean almost from all around the world basically right Deb yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's just it's just really oh, incredible hang on we've got another Pardon, what are you talking about oh hang on I'm showing off another braid hang on okay all right cool. Oh, I think. Did I do that right? No, hang on. I've done that wrong. Let me try that again. Oh, um, Barbara. Oh, what... oh, cool. Nice. Barbara, what did you mention my name for? Oh, no, I was just saying that you got, we've got people oh, from I all know. across the world. That's nice, Pat. I... Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Well, my favorite was when we had a meeting with Nick, who's in London. It was 12 midnight for her. And we had somebody in New Zealand, I think it was. It was 12 noon for them uh -huh, yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's just all over thanks thanks for doing that everybody i really appreciate it i just i i love i love being able to see you know where where people are from and and i know when i'm at my con we're we're doing a lot of digital conferencing these days and and so um we have our experimental archaeology um group in europe is doing what we call the world tour and um, some of us are sponsoring hotspots and it's going literally all around the world. And it, for four days at the end of March and one day into April, um, you, there will be um, uh, presentations on different aspects of experimental archeology. span um, And experimental archeology span basically entails Things like this, um, learning learning how to do the technologies of the past um, through um, different interpretations that we do as archaeologists. You know, whether it be um, working with um, pottery, 
um, metallurgy, uh, textiles. Um, we have people that are doing different foodstuffs um, from different recipes that are being found. Um, I teach an experimental archaeology class, and I actually had one of my students um, do his pro project on Egyptian beer. Um, unfortunately, the two bottles exploded on him. <laughs> as he left it in too warm a, a place and but he he so instead did he get... discovered egyptian propulsion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right and and so um so but he said he said he got some really interesting fermentation because he, he was able to um he couldn't obviously drink it because it burst but he still could see that there was some really interesting fermentation in the beer itself and um so yeah, so yeah, we and and basically that's what we you know that's those of us that are experimental archaeologists um, that's what we're interested in is is trying to understand those technologies of the past, which can help us understand what we find in the archaeological record at times too. So um, so yeah, but okay, let me finish. I'm going to finish. Uh, I think I'm done with that. So that actually I really like. I love doing. I love doing wild color. So, <laughs> okay, so, all right. So if you wanna move on to a seven strand, okay, go ahead. You can see my, my nice little um, square. Uh, uh, let me, let me wait, move it, the, there we go. You can see my nice little square-ish band here. You can see um, up here where I got basically the kind of that fishtail look like I had in the seven strand and then the flat woven band up here. Okay, so. All right, so um, so at this point then, yeah, we got half an hour. Um, look, go ahead if you want and set yourself up with a seven strand, same process um, as, as far as the setup is concerned, just, um, you're going to do seven loops instead of five. But now I have to decide on colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun bit. It is, agreed. But still, it can be the hard bit too. Okay, so. HSU colors are green and gold. Should I do something? I'm really liking this maroony color, though. That shows up really well on camera, too. Say again? The maroon shows up really well on the camera, too. Oh, oh, okay, cool. All right. So I think I'm going to do a short one on this, though, so we'll have... Let's do. Okay, that's what I'll do. Well, and I really love um my fa actually, my favorite Christmas colors are this maroon and this pale green. Um, it doesn't look quite so green on the on the camera, but um, I really I really like them as far as decorating for Christmas. So. I think someone's vanished to go and get some more yarn. <laughs> <laughs> that can be, yeah. Either that or it's a tea break. It's one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and if you want to spot, let me, Nick, I can show Barb. Oh, yeah. Hang on. That I did yeah, so far. There we go. Oh, there you are. Hey. Hey there. You come back a bit towards you. There's my three. Yeah. There we go. Okay. 
Yeah. And here's two fives. Oh, okay. All right. You got two fives done, huh? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, okay. there's, there's my, my square one. Okay. It's just not focusing, is it? No, it's not. It's yeah. Your camera's having a little time. I, I did a square one for a lanyard for um, my master's thesis chair. Um, I love flat one. And, and, what's that? Yeah. Love the flat one came out nice. Really yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's really Which, cool. Okay. If yeah. It would get in focus. Not so much. To, I know. Yeah. Okay. I lost count. Where am I here? Uh, that color. can't believe this is the class class it's been a great month <laughs> yeah it was just kind of like okay i am um, i'm i've enjoyed working on this event and doing everything and after today i still have some work to do to get videos up on youtube and whatnot mm -hmm. um and um i'm i'm glad this is the last day in that I'm getting kind of tired and fuzzy brain. Well, yeah, some of this stuff. But I also find myself feeling a little emotional as <laughs> I'm watching the last two classes wind down and this being over. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean it can't happen again, right? It's something we'll have to think about and look into um, uh, depending on, you know, how people feel what they want to do and whether we can get um, video folks. I'm thinking maybe next February, we could do just a couple evenings, um, you know, maybe one evening a week or something like that. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely be up for teaching next time. <laughs> So, so Nick, how did you find Deb and, and everybody that, that put this together? Uh, I, I have a friend who I teach a form of crochet to called uh, Double Feeler. I think Americans call it interlocking. Okay. And she knows that I'm into all things fibery. Um, uh -huh. And uh, I don't know, probably don't, um, Kate. And she linked me over and said I think you might like this <laughs> okay then I got very excited um I was going to offer to teach but I had COVID just before Christmas so oh my I okay wasn't sure what my energy levels would be uh-huh so, but I thought what I can do is host that's not a problem so I kind of feel that I got to attend classes and my way of giving back was by hosting there and you go. very and very much appreciate it. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing you teach classes if we do this again in the future. Um, and I bet you, uh, we the person who taught the parasol class, it was really fun watching enrollment. And by the way, we are now officially at one thousand one hundred and fifty-one. Wow! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, but it was fun watching enrollment. I would post something and I'd see a bump, or somebody would would mention us and we'd see a bump or whatever and then one day there was this huge bump and I couldn't figure out what it was and it went on for a couple of days we got a lot of people and then the person teaching the uh, parasol crochet class uh, mentioned that she had posted it in her worldwide crochet and knitting Facebook group 
<laughs> so it's a distinct possibility that Nick's friend found out from there. No, she <laughs> knows. I think she knows Erin. Oh, okay. Because she does living history. She belongs to living, or used to belong to living history groups here. Okay. So cool. So she, we, we talk about card weaving and things. <laughs> I don't know many nice. people here that do that type of thing. So it was just nice to find someone that does it. So. Oh, cool. Well, you found a whole bunch more people that do a whole lot of different well, stuff. I, yeah. yeah. I have no idea how excited. It's things like this, the, the finger looping. I taught myself years ago. I've never met anybody else who does it. So to have a whole classroom of people doing it is amazing. Nice. And yeah, it the, is. Did you join the Facebook groups too? I, I, I have, Now I know they exist. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm a little overexcited. Now yeah, I excited. Yeah, the, the gal the gal who runs it, um man, she's just she's got some incredible work. I I just yeah, it's just amazing what she is doing. Um you know, I have to admit, I have to I, I, I'm presuming that it's a woman just because of the name. Um, but Where am I here? Oh, sorry, I've got to get the pink. Yes, I, I have that book. <laughs> That's what I learned from. Okay. So how much of our SCA terminology has confused uh, the, the mundane folks? Um, I've, I've, it took me a while to get used to everybody having two names. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a while. Uh, but I'm, I'm surviving. <laughs> I'm learning fast. <laughs> Talk, it's just your name and your club name. Yeah, it's just, just getting used to people calling people by different names when they come in. It just, it's like, who am I writing? <laughs> well, and, and it's also too, is, is, is if you have a crossover at a certain level, like, um, the uh, like the Griffin Dye Work Retreat had, you know, not just the SCA folks, but you know, um, modern it, everyday uh, non uh, historical reenactment people in it, uh, you know, and and so you know, I've I've known people by their SCA names like Eowyn, um for the longest time. I never knew her mundane name, you know, and it was just a, it was always Eowyn. You know, and <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, uh, oh okay. the retreat the retreat community has turned into about a 50 50 representation of people who do costumed historical reenactment and people who do not do yep. costumed historical reenactment. So being part of February was simple because I'd already been used to it's a 50 50 chance someone has never heard of this and I'm okay with that. <laughs> One okay. of my, oh no, oh. you're gone. No, go ahead, Deb. I, I'm, I was going to say I'm one of my all time favorite quotes was a uh, one gentleman who was married to someone in the SCA was looking through her address book one day and said, You know half as many people as I thought you did. They all have two names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had people kind of go when they first, you know, when I, I, they first find out my SCA, I mean, my name day name, and, and they'll go, Barbara? You're not a Barbara. You're a Sealy. <laughs> and, 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 and it's kind of like, no, I, you know, I, I, I actually love my, my mundane name. And I was named after a very beloved aunt. So I don't have a problem with it. But, you know, they still have a hard time, you know, with, with the idea of, uh, but no, 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 no. Barbara just doesn't work. So, okay. So how are people doing as far as um, getting prepped up for number, for seven strand? Uh, are we ready? Are we, uh, yeah, there's thumbs up. There's a thumb. I saw. I'm, I'm so, okay. All right. So now the big difference here is if, is you've added two strands to your your working weave. All right. So what it is 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 it's more about remembering 
where you are um, than it is um, trying to learn something new. All right. So what we're going to do is very, we're going to start off with um, one of the easier ones. We're going to start off with a square this time. Okay. And what we're going to do is you've got your, you've got three on one hand, four on the other. Okay. And let's see, I want to go this way. Okay. And so what you're going to do is, is, is you're going to go over the first one here. Okay. And then reaching through under all the rest of those, grab that and bring it through. Okay. And it's basically, like I said, what you were doing with your five strand, but you just added two more strands to it. So it makes it a little, little weirder. Grab okay. that and yeah. grab the most outside loop. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So at, at the, this, this turquoisey color here was the farthest outside loop. Okay. So let me, let me see if I can get it back to where I was. Okay. So I've got four on this hand, three on this hand with my index finger th three free. So I'm going to go over thread number one and go one, two, three, four, five threads over uh, I mean, under, grab that outside thread, which is the turquoise thread here, okay, and bring it through, okay? So now this is the tricky, really tricky part because now you have to manipulate that little pinky finger that does not want to cooperate, all right? And you're going to bring it into that loop and walk it over to the pinky finger, leaving your ring free, ring finger free, and then taking your ring finger in where your middle finger is, grab that, release your middle finger, take your middle finger into where your index finger is, grab that and release your index finger. So that pinky coming into play, at least for me, is always really difficult because my pinky fingers do not want to cooperate. So. So now that turquoise piece is out, out here at the, the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over one, and then I'm going to go under two, three, four, five, grab that outside one. Okay, in this case, it's, it's one of the maroons, and bring it through and tighten it down. Okay, now, this is even worse because this is my left hand. So, so move your pinky in, remove your ring finger, move it over to your middle finger, remove middle finger, move your middle finger over, remove index finger, and you now walked three threads. Okay. All right. So tighten that, make sure that's tightened down. So over one, under five, grab the outside one, and bring it through. Tighten it down. Okay. And walk. Now you'll also find that as you begin to look at the creases in your fingers at the joint area, it begets, begins to get really shiny because you're rubbing that, that skin raw. <laughs> so, okay, so over one, under five threads, grab the outside and bring it through. And walk. Whoops, see that's, yeah. Okay, move finger. There we go. That and up. Okay. Over one, under five, grab that outside thread and bring it through. And walk and walk and walk. Okay. Over one, under five. Grab the outside thread, bring it through, and walk. And walk. 
that little pinky one. Yeah, that that <laughs> ring finger on that side. I, I've got you know the arthritis has just gotten to the point where it makes it really hard to maneuver it. So, <laughs> and over one, under five, grab the outside thread and bring it through, and walk and walk and walk. over one, under five, bring it through and tighten it down and walk. And that walk. This creates a and spray walk. or a square braid. What's that? Does this create another flat braid or a square? This braid? is, no, we should be doing that. This should be the square one. Right, no, I'm just no. asking. <laughs> okay, yeah, yep. I think I've, <laughs> okay, over one under five and bring it through and it takes a little while for the for the the square to start to show up particularly when you're working with this many threads because you're skipping a lot of those threads and leaving them loose for a while um but um yeah and it, it will eventually show up at the end of your um at the end of your your sample okay thank you And over one, under five, grab the outside, bring it through, and tighten it down. And walk, and walk, and walk. Over one, under five, grab the outside, bring it through, and walk, and walk, and walk. Okay. Everybody doing okay so far? Yeah, there's nods of heads going on. Okay, good. I want a thumbs up, so that must be good. Okay. <laughs> oh, double thumbs up. Things are really good. <laughs> Is that good? Double thumbs up? Okay. <laughs> Got your thumbs up with your threads on your fingers, right, Tina? <laughs> I'm doing it on my foot and I had my leg up and I'm weaving and my husband came down. He's like, what in the heck are you doing? Yeah, I have a friend who um, does uh, backstrap weaving and she's, uh, she's actually Australian, but um, she lives in South America and uh, she comes up here to teach workshops every so often. And uh, I, I love watching the pictures she posts when she's back in South America, you know, showing the, the women down there with everything tied off to their toes and, you know, or even even a, a backstrap loom that has, um, you know, a, a beam on it that is tied off to the to the weaver's feet. So it's really interesting to watch. So. Rosie, you doing OK there? Okay. Card weaving after Glasgow under the tablet weavers. Oh, okay. And is that the tablet weavers? Is that um, uh, Pacific Coast time? Uh, no, it's it's a uh, East Coast. So it started at seven. Um, it started oh, forty-five okay. minutes ago. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, but anyone who, who does card weaving, come on. If you can stand another Zoom call, come on to uh, uh, hang with hang with the tablet weavers in you know, 20 I, minutes. Yeah, I tried some tablet weaving and kind of went, okay, yeah. I have friends that will do this. I'm, I'm happy. I, I, you know, I did a little bit of it, but. <laughs> I love it. It's absolutely awful. I hate every moment and I love it. <laughs> If you haven't already, would you post that meeting to um, the Fiberary list? Oh, sure. Great idea. So going forward, I'd love to use this list to give people other online things that they can do. That would be excellent. I figure we've got, oh, by the way, I don't know if I told you, did I tell you? 
we went over 1,150. Yes, you did, yeah. Yeah, um, oh, and I know, figured. Oh, no, go ahead, sorry. No, no, go on. Oh, no, I just I just realized, no, I'm, I got them doing fishtail instead of uh, square, so. That could be why they're not turning out square? Yeah, it could be, yeah. Hmm. So I just. <laughs> it's a nice pattern though. It is, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, I love the fishtail. I don't know if you can see, you know, on this one here, you know, even the, this side, but then this side's got a little stitch happening in it. Let me see if I can get it turned over here. I, it's got a, almost like a little stitch happening in it, so. Yeah, the okay, so if you've got, so go ahead, Deb, finish, why don't you finish off? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, we might as well use this uh, forum that we've got of people to let everyone know what they could be doing while they're waiting for everything to open up and even afterwards. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Keep it going. Yeah. Okay, so if you've got a little bit of that done now, you know, two or, two or three inches or so, um, let, we can move on to the, the next version, okay? Um, so, um, oh gosh. Uh, let me know when you're ready and we'll move on to the, um, the flat braid, okay? There's one thumbs up, two thumbs up, three. Yeah, no, I think they're ready. Okay, all right. So the flat braid, um, the difference between the flat braid and the square braid is we're working, flat braid, you're working with, with two threads here and there, okay, versus um, individual threads all the way around. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go over one, under two, over two, under one, and grab that outside thread and bring it through, okay? Tighten it down, get your walk in, okay? Over one, under two, over two, under one. Now there's a bit of a pattern involved in that. You can hear, hear that as you move along. Grab your outside one and bring it through, okay? And tighten it down. So over one, under two, over two, under one. Bring your outside thread through and tighten it down. Hmm. Over one, under two, over one, I'm sorry, over two, under one and bring it through. And I got an itchy nose again. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah <laughs> over one under two over two under one bring that outside thread through and tighten it down over one under two over two under one outside thread bring it down Tighten it and walk. Over one, under two, over two, under one, and pull your outside thread through. Over one, under two, over two, under one, grab that outside thread and bring it through. I might have needed to make this a little longer. Oh well. Over one, under two, over two, under one. Grab the outside thread and bring it through. Walk it. Over one, under two, over two, under one, and bring it through. And you can begin to see that how it's flattening out for in this version. So over one, under two, over two, under one, and bring it through. We doing okay? Yeah? Over one. This is one I've never, or the first one was one I'd never done on, on the seven and I'm delighted you showed it to us first. 
Which one? Uh, which one? The the herring, uh, the fishtail uh, herringbone thing? Yeah, because oh, I, okay. I love the little stitch on the other side, and I've been trying to compare this these two uh, purse strings on sweet bags, and that helps. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, these make great um, bag strings for bet for draw little drawstring reliquary bags and things like that. So, yeah. okay, so over one, under two, over two, under one. Yeah, I know. Um, I have I have uh, friends that like to do later period stuff, Elizabethan and Tudor, and they'll use um, finger loop braiding for making ties for their corsets and, and things like that. So, yeah. So I this is because uh, I've got a shorter I did a short sample on this one. So um, I'm going to actually stop here in a little bit so I have enough left to show you the last one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. So uh, let me know um, when people are ready to do the, the, the third one and then we'll move, we'll move on. So, okay. Oh, double thumbs up there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got some. Okay. All right. So you yep. got enough of that sample in. All right. So for this last one, we're and we're going to do basically, we're going to be doing an over, under, over, under for e individual threads. So starting on, you know, starting in this side here, I'm going to go over one, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one, and pull it through. Okay. So you're using each individual thread on its own. So over one, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one, and pull your outside thread through, okay? Over one, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one, and pull it through. I have to admit, I, I actually find the over ones, over and under ones a little easier in my mind because as a weaver, uh, a loom weaver, you know, it's a ba basically what you're talking about is, is a basic tabby weave. So over one, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one, and pull the outside loop through, so. It's going to be difficult for me not to stop once we finished here and go and get cotton and start finger looping. But I think one o'clock in the morning may not be the time to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's what almost one o'clock at where you're at, yeah. Nick. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the husband would just that would be the final straw. <laughs>
And if you need to, you know, you, I, I'm getting to a point where my fingers are sore. And so I'm having to use my thumb to help grab that a little bit, just because we've been what at this for almost two hours. So, um, oops, I thought I lost it there. One of the hardest things I find when I'm doing finger loop braiding like this is, is keeping my tension and trying to keep my stitches, you know, all the same size, um, particularly when you're first starting on it. it it's a little hard to get everything um, at the very beginning, um, all of the same size. And that's something I need to work a little bit more on. I uh, my cords got smaller the closer I got to finishing. Say again? I always found my cords got smaller as I got closer to finishing. Yes, yeah. It was my understanding that that's what they've found in the extant pieces. So I've just never worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what happens, you know, <laughs> traditionally, then why would I? Yeah, right. Ah, poo, I just lost that. Okay, where was I? Okay, there we go. Could they set something in? I ran out of warp. <laughs> oh, oh, cat's showing off. Hang on. Let's have a look at cats. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm running out of warp here too. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just, sorry for the camera quality, but I've got my yes. fishtails, if you put my your squares, hand, and my flat. It might. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Oh, there you go. Yep. Okay. And that is lovely. Wonderful. Yeah. I just posted a link in the chat for uh, my craft web page where I have finger loop braiding. If you're interested in making longer pieces, I went down that rabbit hole and um, <laughs> I have some photos and uh, some photos of some drawings um, with info about various different types of things that they've used throughout the ages to make longer than arm length. I also have info on a, um, a big loom that I repurposed to make a um, finger loop braiding loom to make it as long as I wanted. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So um, the link is in the chat if anyone's interested. Okay. Yeah, and I'm getting to the point where I'm having a hard time finishing this off, so. Anybody else want to show? Oh, hang on. And then let me grab, see who I can see. Oh, right. I'm going to, there we go. Oh, oh, there. Oh, wow. That's nice. Oh, is it now? Is that some wool, Sin? Uh, no, yeah, that's, um, uh, that's just cotton. Fat oh, okay. cotton. It's okay. what I had left over from the sprung class. Well, and, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, that's, I, I like you, I use the much, I use larger stuff for, um, uh, when I'm doing demos, because it's a little easier to see, but I figured being as, as we were all fiber geeks anyway, you know, it wouldn't hurt to use some of the smaller stuff for my, uh, yeah. They appear on my screen. Christine. There she is. Oh, and of course she's doing, yeah. <laughs> oh. so I, I, you're, you've got your, you're on mute, Chris. Ha, there, there we go. go. 
All right. So I here's the beginning where we did the fishtail. Yeah. And I, I went into some regular traditional seven loop finger loop there to see what it would do. Uh-huh. So it kind of does the, the chevrons on both sides. Yeah. And then there's the flat. And then there's the square. And then there's a monkey. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Good to see you, sweetie. Mwah. I said so, the same thing to you, but she doesn't have your picture up. I, I don't I lost you somehow. I don't know where it went. Lost who? <laughs> Uh, it's me? Because... Uh, somehow I have me on both of them. I don't know how yeah, that happened. Uh, that's because I've got you on spotlight. There you go. Oh, Try... Okay, there you go. <laughs> yes. <sir>. Okay. <laughs> right. Let me show Tina. Tina. Okay. I'm going to have to stop. I can't get. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Great. Cool. So, Tina, what kind of what kind of yarn were you using there? Just some cotton that I had laying around. I have practice baskets for all of these classes that I just left out so I could just grab a basket. Some okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the cotton because it's a little more stable than some of the other yarns, but that doesn't mean you can't, you can't, you, you know, you can use wool. Yeah, I mean, uh, two of the, two of the extant pieces I know of were made in wool. So um, I, there's also one that was made in silk that turned out really gorgeous. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I know you've got one to share. Oh, oh there we go. Oh. oh, look at all those colors. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it just did a rainbow of colors because it made Yeah. Them. And it's easier to see when you're doing them where, where they're going over. So I figured I'd use, and this is just cotton that I've used for inkle. So just yeah. a bunch of colors. Well, and that, that's why I have people um, that, you know, start off with, with you know, in the three with three different colors you know and using different colors because that way it is a little easier to see the you know the where each of the threads are going or where you're going with it because you can keep track of the individual threads so i know that the second the five one i did turned out kind of um rainbowish in a little a little bit so um so yeah but awesome yeah yeah oh Oh, Ewan, okay. Yeah, it's it's really interesting that this this turned out a little bit wider than I'm used to. So um I don't I maybe oh, it's my, just my little fingers just really were rebelling. Oh, it's don't like, you know? Really slowly, but <laughs> there's two of these that I'd never done before, so that's why I'm in the class. Thank you, dear. Oh, sorry. Huh. Cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I have fun. I, I, you know, I'm a sampler. I love doing samples. Okay. And um, I've only ever, no, I, I take that back. I, I finished more than just one piece because <laughs> I love to sample. I set up my looms. I, I, I weave the different weaves structures that I can do on them. And then I take them off and I put tags on them and, and then I put them away. And I did do, um, I have done other pieces before, but I, like I said, I made a, a lanyard for my my master's thesis chair for a thank you gift um, in in our in our school colors and and you know it's uh, but I love doing the samples like this to to look at the different color combinations and and everything that you know you get out of out of doing some of these pieces like this so. There's, there was, I'm, I'm looking at this now, there's actually somebody online that takes all of their, um, takes all of their uh, uh, little sample pieces like this and actually weaves little squares out of it. So, so that you've got something like that going, you know, so. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and it's just, it's just amazing because there's all kinds of different widths and colors and, you know, and uh, techniques that go into it. So yeah, I think it's a great, it's a great way to show it off to a certain extent, so. Well, it, you know what, um, I, I guess, uh, um, is there any other questions? Um, I don't see anything in there going to go into this in there. Um, then I, I guess I'd, I'd really like to thank Nick for being my host on this because she was great being able to do all of the uh, the changing of the camera for me and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, thank and, you for such a great class. 
and 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 I hope I hope we get a chance to catch up with each other next time I'm over in England, which is hopefully in September. Um, yeah, I'm I, I'm I hoping to do a term of abroad over there. So I think I'm just going to close stop the recording now. So I'm I'm okay. not going to close the room. I just stopped no. the recording. As